In this video, we're going to briefly present the solution for the fully developed laminar flow in a circular pipe. If you recall back in Module 3, we solved the Navier-Stokes equations for the laminar flow, pressure-driven laminar flow between parallel plates, was our Poisson flow example. This is very similar, except we're going to look at fully developed flow in a circular pipe. So instead of between an infinite slit between two parallel plates, we're looking at an infinite pipe. So the geometry that we're looking at is the region where we have a fully developed flow. So we have the same velocity profile entering our section as we have leaving our section. We have our center line here, and we have a radial coordinate going from the center line out towards the pipe wall, which is at a radius of capital R. And so the cross section of this pipe is of course a circular cylinder with R going out this way. Now we can solve this problem in a number of ways. Um, one way would be to take the Navier-Stokes uh, equations in cylindrical coordinates and do exactly what we did in Module 3 and solve for the velocity profile in, um, in this geometry. And if we do that, we would get this equation here for the velocity profile. The local velocity as a function of R is a quadratic in the radius here. So little r over r, it's quadratic. We get this parabolic velocity profile. You notice that we have the kinematic viscosity, or sorry, the dynamic viscosity in here. We have a negative and a dp dx. And this dp dx is a constant. If you remember when we looked at fully developed flow, we saw that the pressure drop uh, dropped, and we had a slope of the pressure versus distance along our fully developed pi pipe was a constant value. So the rate of drop of pressure with respect to distance, dp dx, is a constant in the fully developed regime. And of course dp means p2 minus p1, therefore it means p2 minus p1, and of course we need to have a higher pressure at 1 driving the flow in this direction, so this will be a negative quantity, and to get a positive velocity we see the negative uh, velocity appearing here. Once we have this solution, there's many things we can do with it. Um, we can calculate the volume flow rate. And of course the volume flow rate through our pipe is coming from integrating the velocity with respect to area, and for our circular pipe, that element of area is 2 pi r dr. So if we look at our cross section, and we look at some radius r, our element of area is of course the circumference of this, 2 pi r, and it has a thickness dr. And so there's our, there is our element of area dA. We can substitute that into our equation, or substitute the equation for u inside our integral here, and integrate it from the center of the pipe out to the wall at r, simply substituting this inside here, with our dA being 2 pi r dr, and we can evaluate this integral to see very quickly that the volume flow rate is again a negative because dp dx is a constant and is negative, and it's proportional to the radius to the fourth. And what we see, not surprisingly, is that as we increase the pressure drop across this pipe, so if we make P1 minus P2 higher, we're getting a larger and larger flow rate through that pipe. <clears throat> and very often we want to talk about the diameter of the pipe, so I could very well just as easily substitute in that the di diameter over 2 is equal to the radius, and I see that the volume flow rate is now this pi over 128 uh, diameter to the fourth power. So there's our volume flow rate through our pipe, and we could if we want, and often we will say, over some length of pipe, L, or per unit length of pipe, uh, change that d, dp into a delta p, the difference between the pressure, well, the difference between the pressure here and here, to respect the definition of delta being p2 minus p1. So we might see it that way sometimes, just changing our dp dx into a delta p over L. Once we have the volume flow rate, we can very easily calculate the average velocity, the average velocity is simply the volume flow rate over the area. The area of my circular cross section is pi r squared, so I can take the expression I had on the previous slide for the volume flow rate q and divide by pi r squared, and I'll see that the average velocity is r squared minus r squared over 8 mu dp dx. <coughs> 
We can look at the maximum velocity, and of course we can see from the diagram that the maximum velocity occurs on the center line, but if we wanted to do this mathematically, we can do the problem of saying the derivative uh, evaluates to a value of zero when we have a local uh, extreme point. In this case, it will be a maximum. It could be a minimum or a maximum. But so if we take du dr and we set it equal to zero, we can take our velocity profile and take the derivative of it and set it equal to zero. And we'll see that in order for this to be equal to zero, dp dx is not zero where there's no flow. The viscosity is not zero. And therefore, the condition where this occurs is when r equals zero. We're at the center of our pipe, and we can see that's a maximum. So the maximum occurs at a radius of zero or along our center line. And we can evaluate what that is simply by putting that radius of zero into our expression for the velocity up here and see that the maximum is given by this expression here. We can also compare that to the, to the average value that we just calculated, the average velocity, and see that that is two times the average velocity. Remember when we did this exact same thing in module three for parallel plate flow, that is the pressure driven flow between the space between two parallel plates, because of the difference in geometry, we saw that the, the maximum velocity was three halves the average velocity, not two times the average velocity. So because of this change in geometry now in a circular pipe, the maximum velocity is two times the average velocity. And we can use that uh, simply to substitute in this maximum velocity here into our expression for u, and notice that of course this is the term exactly that appears here, and so we can write it in a non-dimensional form that u over u max is simply 1 minus r little r over the radius of our pipe squared. We clearly see the par parabolic profile that we get for laminar fully developed flow. Finally, we can look at one more thing. We can get the shear stress distribution by looking at, uh, by manipulating our velocity profile. If you remember, the shear stress, in this case it would be the Rx, uh, the shear stress in the x direction on a R plane, uh, is given by mu du dr. And so I simply need to multiply by mu and take the derivative of my velocity profile to see that that shear stress distribution is going to be r over 2 dp dx. And of course the negative cancelled out because we had a negative here when we took a derivative of this term went to zero and we had the derivative of this term multiplied by this and that gave us gives us this expression here. And what does this say? This means that the shear stress is zero at the center when r is equal to zero the shear stress is zero and it increases linearly to a maximum value at the wall and of course we can know ahead of time looking at this velocity profile this plane here is an axis of symmetry, and therefore the derivative at that point is equal to zero. du dr is equal to zero at that point, and it increases linearly to a maximum, linearly to a maximum at the wall value. And of course we can easily evaluate the wall shear stress. That's simply saying the value of the shear stress when the radius is equal to the pipe radius r, and that's simply r over two uh, times the change in pressure per unit length that f with which we're driving flow through this pipe. And so there's the solution for laminar fully developed flow in uh, uh, laminar flow, fully developed flow in a circular pipe, and it may come in handy as we go through some of our problems and we'll see it used again in order to build up and get to the point where we can calculate the pressure drop in any of our piping systems, the pressure drop due to friction in any of our piping systems.